Hello, my name is Dr. Sean Corpassi. I'm a certified ethical hacker. Today I'm going to be going over spear phishing attacks. Well, it's a targeted attack. It's well researched. It's not a shot in the dark. The attacker has selected somebody that they think has high value uh, as far as the information that they have, whether it's PII, business information. So what they do is they contact this user they try to gain their trust. They have many tactics that I'll be going over, uh, but they use it to exploit them and get what they're looking for uh, to achieve their objectives. Of, of some high profile spear phishing attacks that have happened recently, uh, the one that comes to mind just, just recently made the news was on LinkedIn. Uh, apparently some attackers were creating fake uh, chief information security officer profiles and they were contacting uh, cybersecurity professionals, uh, exactly what they were trying to achieve and, and, and exploit uh, is still to be determined, but that was a very high profile example of a spear phishing attack. The, another example that I can think of was the airlines. There was a particular airline that their passengers uh, and um, their employees uh, recently got exploited in a very high profile attack as well. So those are two examples that I think um, can be used. And unfortunately for us in the cybersecurity world, it's very effective. And uh, the problem is it's human nature to trust. Also, when a attacker poses as an authority figure, we naturally want to comply. The problem is also that the attacker has done research on their target. So they know the pressure points to put on somebody to exploit them and to achieve their objectives. They've already done their research. That's the problem. So in the ethical hacker training, they teach you to think like an attacker, okay? And so as part of a spear phishing attack, you want to apply maximum pressure uh, and create a urgent sense of need that some action must immediately be taken uh, by the user in order for them to basically comply with what's needed. Especially if one were to, uh, if the attacker were to uh, posed as an authority figure, that also helps to create that sense of urgency. Also, another tactic is to say, well, hey, if you if you do this for me, you will get something in return. A gift card is an example. Um, it used to be that these spear phishing attacks were unsophisticated. You could spot it. It was easy to see uh, the typos and spelling, the, uh, something being too formal, whatever it may be. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, these spear phishing attacks have gotten more sophisticated and harder to detect. Being on the cybersecurity side, uh, I can think of uh, numerous countermeasures. I'm gonna talk about some of the most important ones to help with spear phishing attacks. First off, it's training, ensuring your users, your system administrators, everybody uh, that's part of the process, security is everybody's responsibility, and you gotta train, you gotta test, uh, that's crucial. Uh, also need uh, multi-factor authentication. So even if the attacker exploits a password or a credential, uh, they still have to get through another form of authentication. That, that can be helpful. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that there's something called NIST Special Publication 853 Revision 5, which is uh, a really great resource that the federal government uses uh, to look up security countermeasures. So if you're not familiar with that resource, I highly recommend it and I think it will help. So obviously I've already covered spear phishing, but let me talk a little bit about a regular phishing attack. It's not targeted, that's the key point. There's no specific person that they, they're they trying to get ahead of time, the attacker. Um, it's just a huge net and they're trying to get as many uh, users as they can to exploit. Um, I read that over a hundred million uh, phishing email attacks are sent out a day, um, and that's that's a ton. So uh, that's always out there. Um, the other sort of attack I want to talk about is a whaling attack. That's specifically targeting a high-profile person at a company, uh, like a C-suite executive. And what they're looking for, among other things, is a business confidential or, or something of uh, real... Um, implications to the company that, that they wouldn't want to get out. 
Um, so that's a that's a whaling attack. So so both are a little bit different than the spear fishing, uh, but uh, both are good to know about. So there's some real world concerns when uh, these fishing attacks are are facilitated. Um, we're talking about loss of PII. We're talking about the theft of financial information, potentially credit cards, maybe tax info. Who knows? Um, this can lead to ransomware attacks. This can lead to blackmail. It can lead to theft of intellectual property. Um, this is not just, um, you know, bad publicity in the news. This is real, real world implications and could cripple an enterprise or an individual. Uh, it, it can't be taken lightly. And uh, those on the cybersecurity side need to be ever vigilant. Uh, the point is security is everyone's responsibility. You need to ensure everybody's properly trained. They've done testing, that helps. Have layers of security, have a risk-based approach um, to the way that security is handled. Ensure that um, you're reducing the attack surface. And the problem is, is these ransomware attacks and zero day attacks are, are a constant issue. And it's only gonna get worse in the future so, you know, you need to properly spend uh, what is needed on cybersecurity to prevent these spear phishing attacks. So I wish you the best of luck.